Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk quickly about tree diagrams. It's just a little, um, little tool you can use to help you solve some probability questions. So, uh, tree diagrams are generally used for dependent events. They're more useful, and generally only use them for events with two outcomes. You can use them for events with more than two outcomes, but it just becomes a little bit tedious. You run a space on the page, uh, and I don't think they'll ask one on the leading cert anyway. I think it'll only be two outcomes uh, for the leading cert. So we'll start with a really basic example for a coin toss um, and how a tree diagram can help us. So for example, we'll start like this. It's gonna be two branches and then there's also gonna be two branches here. So there's gonna be two different um, coin tosses. So the probability of getting a heads and a tails is half and half, so I'll say H and then T. And then again, the probability of getting a heads and a tails is again half and half. So H and T and H and T. Okay. Um, so what this means is the first time you flip the coin, I'll get this here. This is the first coin toss. There's half, there's a probability 50% of getting a heads and 50% of getting a tails. And the second time you flip the coin <clears throat> is this white circle or the second white circle I've drawn. Because if you get a heads, then there's still a 50% chance of getting either of these. Or if you get a tails in the first one, there's still a 50% chance of getting either of these. So it doesn't make too much sense um, for a coin toss. I was just showing it because it's an easy example. Uh, it makes a lot more sense for a dependent event, which we'll look at next. But the idea is you can follow each of the branches to find the probability of the final outcome. So for example, getting a heads and then a heads would mean we follow this branch and then this branch. So h h and the probability of that is a half multiplied by a half so you just multiply all the probabilities on the branches that you follow so that's going to be a half times a half which is one quarter then h t so if we follow this branch and then we follow this branch so heads the first time and tails the second time again is half times a half uh, which again is one over four and it's the same for down here. So TH and then TT um, is again one over four and equal to one over four. I'm just not gonna write those bits in. So that's one of the important things about a tree diagram is that when you add them all up, they should all equal to one at the end. And this is just a simple example, like I said, how to figure them out and how a tree diagram works. But now we're gonna look at an example with marbles in a bag and it's gonna be a lot more useful but hopefully that'll make sense. So you multiply everything on the branches you take. Okay, so I'll go down here and I'll set up a second example. So now we're gonna look at this example here. So in this example, we have 10 marbles in a bag, um, three of them are red marbles and seven of them are blue marbles. So we take a marble out and then we don't put it back. So the tree diagram is gonna look the same at the start. It's gonna be two branches and then there are going to be two branches. So the important thing here is they're dependent events. So depending, um, on the first marble we take out, it'll affect the probabilities. So this one here, I'm gonna say it's three over 10, and this is seven over 10. So the three over 10 one is the red. So I'll say that here, red, and I'm actually gonna put another, um, no, never mind, wait, I'll, I'll go to that later. And then this is the blue. Um, and I'll just do the rest in yellow. So it's going to be four and B. So 3 over 10, the probability of getting a red one, and 7 over 10, the probability of getting a blue one. Okay, so now for the second marble we take out, which is uh, over on this side, numbers are going to be a little bit different. So, say for example, the first time we did get a red marble, that means there are going to be two red marbles left, and there's still going to be seven blue marbles. So, there's going to be nine marbles altogether left in the bag. Um, and I'll just do that in, I guess I'll do it in red on this side. So the probability of getting another red marble this time is gonna be two over nine, and the probability of getting a blue marble is gonna be seven over nine, okay? So again, I'll just say red and blue. So I know it's all in um, red pen, but ignore that. And so this one is, we take a red one and then we get another red one, and then this outcome is we take a red one and then we get a blue one. So now I'll go down to this case here, the blue. Uh, so the first marble we took out was blue, then the second one, and there are gonna be three red marbles left and only six blue marbles. So the probability of taking a red now 
is going to be 3 over 9 and the probability of taking a blue is going to be 6 over 9. So again, this arm is red or this branch and this branch is blue. So that means this one is going to be BR and this one is going to be BB. So blue then red, blue then blue. And in this case, it's just a nice way of working it out. If you try to work that out in your head, it's quite easy to kind of get confused uh, about the order, but it's a nice sort of graphical uh, way of showing it all. So now we can calculate all the different probabilities. So I use green because it's a nice neutral color. So the probability of getting red then red is we gonna, we're gonna follow the branch. So it's three over 10 multiplied by two over nine, okay? So three over 10 times two over nine then red then blue we follow the red branch and then the blue branch so it's going to be 3 over 10 again as the first one times 7 over 9 7 over 9 so that's this branch and then this branch <laughs> okay then getting blue and then red so the first one is 7 over 10 so it's going to be 7 over 10 times the second branch we take so we go blue and then red is going to be times 3 over 9 sorry times 3 over 9 and then blue and then blue is seven over 10 times six over nine. Okay, and then we can stick all of these into our calculators to find uh, the numbers. So this is going to be, sorry, I filled some of those. So six over 90, 21 over 90. And um, this is again going to be 21 over 90. And this last one then is 42 over 90. So they're a little bit <clears throat> a little bit more awkward than the coin examples where they all worked out to be one over four. Uh, and this is sort of an example where a tree diagram is really useful. And if you want to check, you can sub all of these into a calculator, add them all together, and the answer should be one. So if the answer isn't one, then you know you've made a mistake. Uh, so that's it for tree diagrams. I'm not gonna give you a kind of an example to do, but if you do come across a difficult question that you're kind of struggling with to work it out in your head, try a tree diagram there, a helpful little way, a little tool to answer some questions. Yep, so that's it. In the next um, the next question, we're gonna look at uh, relative frequency as another way of solving probability questions. Okay, so we'll see you then. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the videos with friends. Thanks.